Hi folks, welcome back again. Uh, this time I'm just doing a review of some Mamera plastic terrain. Um, I was going to do some Lustrian themed terrain, I was going to build some, uh, but I didn't really have the time at the moment, um, so I thought, you know, I'll go out and see what I can buy. I didn't want anything big or heavy, I can keep it for, you know, for my club stuff. Um, so I went for these Mamera plastics, I really didn't know how, what, you know, how they would stand up to anything. And I brought the first batch, including like the ziggurat, um, some river sections and all that. And I really liked it. I went back and um, brought a few more and I thought, you know, I'll do a little review just so you can see what it looks like. Um, I'm also going to go over just what I did to it so you can see um, how much effort I've put into uh, adding it to finishing it off. And uh, the plastics you can see now um, in, the back, in the back there, um, they all come with this white plastic. Uh, this is the only one thing that I'd probably have a little bit of a gripe around. Um, white plastic, if anything chips, it, it shows up really well. Um, obviously if you prime it in your PVA it should be pretty solid but you always get the chips I mean I dropped a piece I hadn't PVA finished it yet and I quickly showed up so in the future if uh, these guys could ever do it in different colors I mean so like some of the buildings have like gray plastic or these hills now just do uh, brown plastic and most people could just flock it from there and not even have to paint it in the first place um, so yeah there's a lot of potential these guys uh, the price of them is sensible um, I don't think I paid more than a eight nine quid for any piece so uh, let's have a quick look and see what I did with them so for this project I'll be working on, on a bit of river section um, I wanted an extra river section just to turn into a ford for some of the Warhammer skirmish scenarios uh, so this is how it comes square edged and looking like that plastic so the first thing to do was just to cut around the edges to make it look a bit more river like so taking off the square edges and uh, now we're looking at something like this and I actually did this with the scissors, the plastic's really thin um, just to let you know one thing I did worry about was the plastic being so thin for the big pieces that it'll have too much bend in them but actually like the hill um, that you see in the first picture right at the back of underneath is actually a lot thicker plastic um, so for this I just used a pair of scissors and cut the curves top and bottom and then glued down some large bits of sand uh, this is just to act as the forge in the centre and then paint the whole thing with a mixture of PVA and um, filler just to give it a bit more texture. So the paint I'm using for this is actually from um, Pebeo. Um, I think that's how you say it, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I got onto this uh, a while back, uh, it's acrylic paint. I mean you could use like emulsion this because it's terrain. Um, but it's not too expensive, it's 100 milliliters for 4 quid I believe. Um, I get mine from, I think it's Alternative Armies, it's a 50 mil manufacturer. It's a bit awkward because the actual site itself doesn't actually show it has paint. You have to put it into the search and you can pick it up. Um, I have actually found an alternative as well. Uh, it's just slightly cheaper. But the only place I can seem to get it at the sensible place is um, a local store. Uh, well, I say local, it's about an hour away from me. But um, it's called The Range and they have acrylic paint in it and it's just a, an acrylic paint that is cheaper than using your own miniature paint I primarily brought all of this for basing uh, so I don't use all my normal paints for basing I use the bigger tubes of acrylic paint and um, go from there so this is what I'll be using uh, for the base coat so here you can see it's undercoated and already you can see the texture coming through I'm just picking up there uh, so with a bit of dry brushing this should look quite good um, as I said, I'm doing this really simple because I just wanted to get it done at the time. I'm not putting too much effort into doing it. So this shouldn't be too bad for um, folks to do, really. So these are the colours I used for the next stage. This is just highlighting the earth and uh, the stones in the river. As you can see, um, the only thing I would say is don't bother with stones. Uh, yeah, painting the river afterwards, obviously, I, it's then going to cover up. Uh, everything that I'd done. Uh, for some reason I thought the stone would show through. I know I'm using a translucent paint on the next stage, uh, but it doesn't quite work like that. Uh, so uh, the actual earth tone is literally the um, ochre colour and dry brushed and then dry brushed up with the uh, ivory colour uh, just to give the earth like that. And this is exactly the same as I use in all my miniature bases as well. So next up uh, is painting the river. It's really important to paint the river the dark brown because uh, the dark colour I'm using here, uh, which I cannot, oh, it's Ultramarine's Blue, it's actually a transparent paint, um, so it really takes that dark colour up really nice. And I then highlight it up again using up to the, uh, this uh, uh, blue cobalt up to the ivory as well. Um, and I just do this in streaks. Everything I paint on the river, um, I keep going up and down the river, so any paint strokes, anything like that, just looks like the flow of the river anyway. So don't try and paint across it because it makes it look far worse <laughs> than I end up making it look. 
So what I do, um, as you can see here, so how I've uh, done the painting is just highlighted either to the edges or to anything that's shallow, like the fall itself. And I've also picked out the stones again using a mix of Mars Black and the grey that I had uh, in the picture earlier on, um, just to darken them up, and then I'll highlight them again. Uh, next up, uh, to give it some protection, the thing that I didn't do with the earlier bits of the river, because I was pushed for time because I wanted to get it out for that weekend, um, is basically paint all the earth areas down with a thin down PVA glue, give it all a good coat and let that dry through. And then I paint the river up, uh, you can just see a bit of shine there with some uh, gloss varnish. Um, don't don't cover that with the PVA, PVA is only on the earth, because the gloss varnish will be enough to protect the actual river itself. And you don't want any matting to come across or any kind of weird reaction that might occur. So as you can see, I've now just flocked up. I'll be using Jarvis flocks and um, some bits from Wooden Scenics, like the foam, the foamy bushy stuff, underbrush, I think it's called. Um, just PVA the, the base down, put your colours of flock on that you want, tap it all off, and then when it dries, I actually do another coat of varnish over the top, just to keep it all on. Now I know this all looks a bit rush, uh, rough and ready, but I, I really wanted just to prove how easy and quick it is to get all this together um, as I said I didn't spend a lot of money on it and I got a lot of train I haven't painted it all up um, so just for good further I'll just leave you some pictures of the train as it looks at the moment So as you can see it looks quite nice and it fills up a table quite well. I mean that's the main reason I brought some more now is I just want to fill up a uh, 6x4 quite nicely. And the other advantage of the stuff is you can get some really big bits of terrain, you know. Um, big hills, that kind of thing. Which you can't normally build out of. Well you, you can but it just takes up so much space, it's weighty. Um, this seems to be a nice uh, combination of it all really. So I really give a thumbs up to Amera Plastics, I'm looking forward to the future, um, seeing what else they do. I'd say if they got rid of their white plastic and added in the uh, brown plastic for the hills and that, so people can just flock them, then a grey plastic for the buildings, I think that would be pretty awesome. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, I'll leave a couple of links in the description um, from Amera Plastics, obviously, and I'll try and find where I get hold of the... Um, paints uh, that I was on about earlier on and that's only fair then because at least you can find them and uh, pass it on that way so alright guys I shall see you on the next one and uh, take it easy alright, thou wellness